Hello and welcome to Foots Lane Stadium in Guernsey where the Swans are in action for another massive league clash today against Guernsey. Now we took the flight over this morning actually from Gatwick. It's the only one in the season where we have to fly over to Guernsey. Did it last year for Jersey and hoping to make it win number 15 in a row today, George. Yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing for this one. As you said, up at the crack of dawn today, took a flight with the refs, with the fans. We've seen a lot of the fans coming out already, putting their flags up and let's hope we can put a show for them today. Yeah, it's got a special feel about this one. Obviously waking up, coming on the coach with the boys flying over. Over. A lot of the fans here as well who have made the trip over, who have come over in their in their numbers, staying in hotels and stuff. So let's hope we can put on a show for them today. Yeah, absolutely. Keep the win streak going, keep Eddie Simon's goal streak going, and let's see how they do. Yeah, going to be another interesting one today. Time for today's lineups. It's another unchanged lineup for the Swans today. Liam Allen in goal, Harry Mills at left back with Joe Prattley Jones at right back, a centre back pairing of Mitchell Goff and Joe Hicks. Three in midfield of Arsene Oikai, Alex Kelly, and Theo Kurturan. And the three up front Eddie Simon, John Gilbert, and Jordan Adiemi. On the bench, it's Daryl Shaw, Torin Roberts, Dom Ogan, Jacob Munting, and happy birthday to Oli Twum. Serbia. But as the ball comes in now from Theo, it's fine. Oh, it's off the head of Joe Prattley Jones, though. He can only steer it over the bar. Norway, go. Saudi Arabia, Denmark, South Carolina, South Africa, Slovakia. The Swans are in the box here. This could be a chance. That looked like a handball there. A couple of colour players from fans. It's a shot goal bound and the Guernsey defender just about sticks a leg out. No line. No line. The Swans here. Swung in. Headed out by Guernsey defender only as far as Joe Prattley Jones. Oh. Who can have a shot and bends it. Oh. And it's just over the top of the bar. That was a brilliant chance. And so nearly ended up in the back of the net. The rebound that came out to him from the corner. Basing so yesterday managed to get a win, a late win in their match against Southall, which has meant that they've now currently gone top of the league. But depending on the score today, Swans are looking to regain the place at the top of the table. As that's a ball over top to John Gilbert here, who touches it down and slots it. Oh, oh the flag's up. The flag flag is flags. up. I didn't did, see the flag up there. Yeah, I was ready to he, start blowing. He did look a bit offside there. I mean, we can have a look on the replay here. It's a little deft touch over past the keeper, wasn't it? Slotted it. He's Needs to quite cover central, that. central, to be fair. Needs so to cover that left-hand side. Mills takes it over the wall oh, and the keeper just palms it over the save. bar. It was big, big save right there. Lovely effort from Harry Mills, who gets it over the wall, gets it down again and forces the save. Teo with it, across to Harry Mills, 54 minutes in. The Swans haven't seen much closer this half to one, picking the defence. Here is Gilbert who strikes, oh. Eddie Simon's oh, offside. On. The flag goes up, onside. the flag goes up. Because John had shot, it dribbled out nicely. Oh, I don't I know Eddie about was that. hiding behind the fullback out there. We're going to have a look like on the replay. It looked like he stayed onside. So, full new set of kits. Teo Kurtaran puts this one in towards the back post. Mitchell Goff is there! Oh! He actually wins every single header. It's actually incredible. Yeah, I don't think he's lost a header in quite a while. And we've seen from corners so many times at the back post. Normally sends them back across goal. Amazing. And that one just drifting over the bar. Probably one of the closest chances of the game thus far. I think it is. It's the 10 and 11. Danny Hale and Joe Alvarez. It's Joe Alvarez who looks to be going for this with his left foot, or is it? It's Hale, strikes it, and it's off the bar. Fires off the crossbar. Oh, goodness <laughs> me. That was an excellent effort. Taylor with it again, Mitch Goff heading towards the back post, a lovely ball in, Joe Hicks wins. Eddie Simon nearly flicked it on there, but Guernsey just managed to get it clear. Danger hasn't fully passed as it's picked up by Joe Prattley. Jones oh. with the strike, goal man, and it's tipped over. <laughs> Brilliantly by the, the Guernsey Chester keeper, Jason Martin. A frantic passage of play there. Joe Prattley Jones with another strike from the edge of the box, but once again, Jones and volley from Joe there. I told you, he's shooting all over the place today. It's his third big shot of the match. Coming towards the front Thumped post there. It's a big long throw. On the gamble. Goff can't quite win it. Well Sends done. it back out to PJ. PJ can put this one back in towards the back stick. Eddie Simon's there. Can't win it. Teo Kurtaran brings it down. Can he get it. a shot away? Still got Teo it. Teo with lovely footwork. Teo into the box. Oh, that was Eddie, Eddie Simon, Simon blocks. Oh, that was one of the best chances of the game, but Eddie just couldn't get a shot yeah, past all the, the players man. On that side. Just get out to them. And they've got to go again in two days' time. 83 and a half minutes played, ball swung in. Joe. Joe Hicks is there. And it's over the bar. It was another good chance. It wasn't quite a free header, it was a contested header. But he couldn't quite get the accuracy on it. Still probing with five minutes to play. 
Can the Swans find what would almost certainly be a winner to reclaim that two-point gap at the top? Harry Mills sends it in. Torren Roberts can't quite it. win it. Can John Gilbert get a strike away? He does. Parried. And it was nearly into the path of Jordan gambled. Adiemi. You've got to be gambling in the box here when you're seeing those long shots. You've got to be firing in. As it stands, Watton and Hersham top of the table with 80 points. Basingstoke, 80 points. Three games to play, both sides back in action. In 48 hours time, we have a mouth-watering end to the season. It's not the result the Swans wanted in Guernsey today. A resolute performance from the Guernsey defence for 90 minutes. The Swans absolutely dominant for the entire game, but couldn't make anything of it. The final score here in Guernsey today. Guernsey nil, Walton and Hersham nil. Here with the manager, Scott Harris, following a disappointing nil-nil draw in Guernsey. Now, Scott, it was a game where I don't think we played bad at all. In fact, I think we played pretty well, but it was just one of those games where Guernsey parked the bus for 90 minutes and we were just unable to break them down. Yeah, that's the, the long and the short of it. Um, everyone tried their best, that's for sure. Um, as did Guernsey, of course. And yeah, it was a fight from, from you know, minute one to the end to, to work any space or to, to get a clear look at goal. Um, we had a couple of times it was in the net. I think John Gilbert's one looked, looked okay from, from where we were, but whether it was or it wasn't, I don't know. Mm. But in those situations, uh, you end up playing against the clock, obviously. Um, if, if, if we'd have got one in the first half, then it, it would have been a case of how many. Um, but obviously, with each passing minute, uh, the crowd here, you know, the cheer when they get a throw on or something, and it, you know, it all plays into the to the atmosphere of uh, getting more and more tense as the game goes on. And yeah, ultimately, we we didn't didn't do enough to win, but you know, we have to get ourselves together because we're back back at it on Monday. So. Yeah, and on that note, I know our winning streak is snapped, but it's one of those games where we don't have a lot of time to stew over it after. In fact, tomorrow we're preparing for a game the next day. So how do we react to this one in your eyes? Uh, hopefully with a good night's sleep, um, which nobody obviously had last night. Uh, easy to say these things now, but it's definitely something which takes its toll when you come here. Um, guys, you know, have had unbelievable energy levels of, of late and yeah just maybe a little something missing today as far as that was concerned um but not on effort not on effort that's that's you know let's have that right but no we obviously you know we'll sound despondent at the moment and we've got now a, a long trip home which isn't going to be too much fun but yeah merston on monday you know they're they're in a similar position to guernsey they've got plenty to play for um and we'll be expecting more of the same from them. Uh, I don't know how results went today or how, how things are looking for them after after their game today. I think they had a, they had a big one. Um, yeah. But yeah, we can only focus on ourselves and we just got just got to be better, better in front of goal, better in, in and around the box and hopefully back in familiar surroundings with plenty of people there to, to support the team. Then, you know, I'm, I'm sure the guys will bounce back. Yeah, on that note, and again, for what it's worth, we have two games at home next week, whereas Basingstoke are on the road twice, first to Thatcham on Monday, and then here to Guernsey, who obviously were unbelievably resolute today. Do yeah. you think that potential two-game, um, the two home fixtures next week could play into our hands in terms of just getting that upper hand again? Well, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, though, like trying to be too predictive with these things. If people were, were to look at, you know, what should have happened today, obviously we we're the, the form team. We should be coming and winning this game, so we're not going to presume anything. Um, two teams that have given plenty of people trouble this season, Merston and Southall, um, and both both got a lot of character in their teams. Those two, so yeah, listen, they'll, they'll be just as hard as as. Bays and Stokes games that, that's you know without a doubt you know mm -hmm. at, at this point in the season you saw how Guernsey reacted afterwards and like I say cheering every little thing along the way they all want to be the be the spoiler and yeah. yep Hamworth Villa had a go at it the other week and and did so at Bays and Stoke and you know Guernsey have done their bit today but it will go on there's you know six games in total to be played three for us three for them and 
I'm sure there's more twists to come. Yeah. The first draw in about three months for the Swans, whose 15-14 game win streak finally comes to an end to set up a mouth-watering end to the season with both Walton and Hersham and Basingstoke on 80 points. As I said, there's not much time to rest or stew over this one, though, as we are back in under 48 hours' time at home to Merston. We'll see you guys then.